the Carl B. Phillips Show. Hosted by me, Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Get ready for another great conversation on the Carl B. Phillips Show. Welcome to the Carl B. Phillips Show. I am Carl B. Phillips, Uncle Carl. My guest today, I love this woman of God. She is from Columbus, Georgia. She is a wife, mother, pastor, preacher, teacher, recording artist, songwriter, author, vocal coach, and she's my auntie sister. You all, please welcome none other than co-pastor Wendy Henderson Wire. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me, Carl. So good to see you. It's so good seeing you. Now, I warned you I was going to ask some random questions. You did. You are really great at a whole lot of things. Wow. Name one thing you realize you're not good at doing. <laughs> Uh-oh. I'm, I'm not always good at organizing. Wow. Things. Wait a minute. You do all these things, but you're not organized, good at organizing. Um, no, I organizing, you know, things like uh, you know, my house is not a mess, <laughs> but our <laughs> home our home is neat and clean, but still I I it I can get I'm not I'm I don't have that that gift necessarily. You know, some people can come in. And just okay, you put every all of this will go here, all of this will do, you know, this, this. I can kind of be because I'm so artsy. I'm always, always have so many ideas, all these butterflies. <laughs> <laughs> so I can I can get scattered. Wow. That's that's if you're like me, everything has to have a place. And if I can't put everything in a place, it's gonna be a mess. That, yeah, that, that that's me. I I have to have the time to organize it. How my creative brain thinks it should be organized. Yeah. yeah. So I I definitely get you on that. Um, you and I met during Transcend in Nashville a few years ago, and mm -hmm. one of the things that we both bonded over was starting a music career, kind of in the later I hate to say latter part of our <laughs> years, but but later in life than most people. Did you ever feel like giving up on your dream of doing music because you felt like, you know what, it's getting later in life and it's just not going to happen for me? Did you ever feel that way? Um, all, almost. <laughs> <laughs> well, almost, you know, wanting to say just never mind. Right. You know, and of course I did, I did start, um, um, I started a long time ago. Um, I started recording. I started music ministry, gosh, over 30 years ago, but mm -hmm. I started recording in 99. Okay. So, you know, I was, um, I was 30 um, by then. So not, you know, not too, you know, not too old, <laughs> not too old to get started at all. But, um, but having started there and meeting you in uh, almost twenty years later, um, and still just, you know, kind of making my way. I think mm -hmm. I was okay. Um, you know, I, wa I wanted, I wanted to give, <laughs> I wanted to kind of, kind of quit. I wouldn't let the words come out of my mouth. Okay. Um, I'm very careful about what I say. Um, um, I don't want to give the enemy anything to work with. Wow. So even if I feel it, I won't say it out of my mouth. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm going to have to take that. Don't say it out your mouth. Don't, don't, don't say, you know, don't it doesn't speak mean, you know, does it right. It doesn't mean that you don't, you know, feel certain ways and that you don't get frustrated. And then the, you know, in the, sacred spaces between me and the Lord when we're in in um when I'm in prayer um I'll kind of talk it out with him you know but and I'll just 
ask him to just cover this space. I don't want the enemy trying to eavesdrop on nothing, <laughs> but I won't, I, I won't say, Oh, I just, I give up. I just, you know, I'll just, and I, I tell this, I say this kind of stuff to our members, to our, um, our, at our ministry. Um, I teach these kind of things. I, I know you'll feel it sometimes. Sometimes you'll feel like giving up, but don't you say it. Don't you say that. You know, um, don't you say stuff like it's just never going to happen. Don't I, say that. I hear, don't a, I hear a song coming out of that. Don't say it. <laughs> don't say <laughs> it. That, that, that could be a hit for you. <laughs> don't, don't say let it. it. Don't give the enemy anything to work with. That's mm -hmm. the sound. Sound carries and it stays in the atmosphere right. for a very long time. So, The other thing that I'm really impressed with you about um, is the importance of family in your life. Yes. With all you do, how do you create a balance to keep your family at the top of your priority list? Um, I think it's, um, you just, you just make room, you make room for it. And, um, when things are happening, when important things are happening with the family, we just block that out. That's, that's, that goes on the calendar and it's blocked out and nothing can trump it, you know? Um, and, uh, and I think the other thing that helps is that we are all busy. The four of us, um, you know, my husband and I are pastors. Um, he's, um, he works, uh, um, in the secular arena as well. Um, uh, and so he's busy that way. Um, you know, I have other things going on as well. Um, but the kids are artsy, you know, um, as well. So when they have something, um, well, I was going to say we're all busy. So everybody gets it. So where we can fit it in, we just, we just treasure those moments. Wow. You know, we'll make, we'll make a moment. Uh, look, we know certain times of day when everybody's available and, you know, we'll do a group FaceTime, you know, or, um, but if there's something special, we'll make, you know, we'll just make our, make it, um, do, you know, do whatever we have to do to get there, to be there, um, or to be present in whatever way necessary. This past Friday, um, we traveled up, we drove seven hours up to Durham, North Carolina. It was twofold. We went up to support brother, um, Pastor Jason Nelson right. for his live recording, but our son was going to be there as well. He's working on the crew um, and the production crew, but he also, uh, Brother Jason, recorded one of our son's songs. So I, I didn't realize Mike Grizzly Real's name was Christopher until recently. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I love your son. He is such an awesome young man. Yes, he so is. I'm excited to hear that he has a uh, he has placement. He got That's his first important. he got his first placement on a, a major gospel artist's album. Now he has several credits on like Tasha Scott's album. Right. Um, but she's an R&B artist and that was an inspirational album. So, you know, it's just kind of a different kind of category. But Jason, of course, is just a, he's a major gospel artist. So this was a big deal for him to get his first placement on it on the gospel side. And um, your, so your daughter has also launched a podcast. She has. She has. Talk a little bit about that. Her podcast, it really is. um she doesn't um, doesn't profess to be an expert, um, or you know, it's not anything like that. It's just her transparency, her walking through life, um, journeying through new spaces, um, taking leaps of faith, and all that she's learning in the process. It's a growing and learning and sharing what she learns as she goes, um, experience and. Um, um, now she's, um, she's insightful. She's, you know, she's bright. So, um, you're going to get it all. You'll get the, you'll get the funny cause she's hilarious. The expressions, the whole thing. She's hilarious. She take after her mother. <laughs> <She's>, <laughs> they are all, they're all Christopher's the funniest of us all, but, but they're all, <laughs> everybody's, everybody's pretty, 
pretty silly. <laughs> now, you and Overseer Gerald Wyatt have been married for over 30 years. Y'all even yeah. did a little song to celebrate them 30 years. We did. <laughs> and you're both co-pastoring the Body of Christ Worship Center. Yes. For young couples starting out in ministry together, talk about how the two of you have learned to make it work and make it last. Marriage? Mm -hmm. Mar marriage. marriage? Yes, marriage. Um, how, how do you make it work and make it last? Um, you're confronted. I think we, now we're at uh, December will be 33 years for us. Mm -hmm. And um, I think um, you're confronted again and again. If you stay together long enough, you're confronted again and again with the opportunity to decide this doesn't work for me anymore. Um, or I, you know, I don't like them. <laughs> I don't like them anymore. Or I'm in a different space in my life. I just mm -hmm. no, no. Um, and and you have to recall that it was God. You you said God said this was the one back when you started out. So now has God changed His mind? Um, or um, or or is this a space you just have to? You have to walk through, um, you have to just kind of press through and understanding that God's objective, one of the things that we have to understand is that God's objective is that we become one. Right. And a married couple, a man and a wife, a, a, a man and woman coming together are coming from two different backgrounds, uh, two different families, two different experiences. They are complete, you know, two different, two totally different people. Making the process of becoming one is always going to be a challenge because that means there's going to have to be some some shaving, some, you know, some sanding, it's some is some difficult work in making you fit together, fit perfectly together as one. And one is the is the objective. One is God's objective. And so that means there's going to be friction. There's going to be some, you know, there's going to be some difficult times bumping heads. And you have to just learn to just grow through those, um, trusting God when you when you feel like you can't trust your spouse or, you know, like I said, you're looking at me like, I don't like I don't like you today. <laughs> um, you have to trust God um, that, OK, I'm not I'm not feeling this right now today, but I still believe you. I still believe you, God, that this is what you said for me, for us. And um, and so you trust God through the days that you don't see. You don't see it in the natural. You just trust God through it. And tomorrow it'll, it'll look better. Tomorrow it'll look more like what you thought, <laughs> but it, you know, it lines up with what God is saying. So um, those seasons don't last. You just have to learn to, um, um, to just kind of grow, grow through them and, and be prepared um, for the growth in one another. If you stay together long enough, um, my, my husband will tell you, um, the girl he's married to today is not the girl he married. Wow. In a, in a lot of ways. Um, there's in, in a, in, you know, in some ways he can look and see the same 16 year old girl. Um, uh, and at the same time, there's moments where he's like, this is, <laughs> this is a different, this is a whole different person. This is a different woman. But what we have to understand and, and people think, well, you know, when you outgrow, you outgrow one another or you, you know, I'm different. And so we just we don't fit anymore. What one of the most profound things the Lord has ever said to me about that whole piece is that God knew when he called you together, he knew what you would look like 20 years down the line, for example. Wow. He knew what that change, when you begin to change and you grow and you, you know, begin to morph into something else, he knew what that would look like in the future. And he called you two together today for what it would look like 20 years down the line. You know, God was prepared. God was prepared for what you would grow into. You know, a, a lot of times, uh, even when my marriage fell apart, we... I'll, we grew differently, but we didn't know how to grow back together. Yeah. So I, I think what you're saying is a lot of wisdom for young couples. Um, I was sharing with some brothers uh, at, at a, a night before a wedding that when you get to that point 
in your relationship. Again, it's important, like you said, to have God, but I think it's also important to have someone that you can have a conversation with that can go, you know, you love that person. Y'all go work it out. Yeah. Yeah. Th I think, I think that's important because ministry can take you on some interesting paths. Like you said, yeah. you know, you, the person that I'm sure you look at your husband sometimes and go, I didn't realize I was going to be married to a pastor. I didn't realize I was going to be married to an overseer that I signed up for this, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. And as you know, it, I, we certainly, we both um, collectively try to avoid, <laughs> try to avoid this. Uh, we were happy supporting other people's ministry, working, you know, working as in a supportive role, supporting role for pastors. And, and uh, sure enough, the time came and, uh, and my husband testifies, uh, you know, he shares it uh, openly that he told God, no. Wow. <laughs> he said, no, no, until the Lord dealt with this, really dealt with his heart and um, helped him to understand um, the weight, the gravity associated with his no. Wow. Um, how, you know, how many people, um, the numbers of people that were connected to um, our yes. And when, uh, when he told was, you, did you have an immediate yes, or did you have to go pray about it? I just, I, I, I wasn't, I remember, I remember not being interested. <laughs> <laughs> I remember not being interested, but, but I came to the yes before my husband did. Wow. Look because it was clear, it was clear to me that, um, that this is what he was calling us to. And, um, I knew there was the, the dis-ease in me was not going to be settled until we just went ahead and said yes and so while we were sitting up in a we laugh about it every time we have church anniversary we laugh about it um about the sunday that we visited another church and it was a perfectly nice church <laughs> it was a perfectly nice church it's nice people you know the spirit-filled place but if they if they didn't know us they might even they might have thought we weren't even saved because we were sitting there looking like just looking around like nothing. We like we didn't feel anything <laughs> because at that point it was time for us to step out and and start uh, launch the ministry. And we're sitting there, and I wrote my husband a note, and all I said, and I slid it to him. I said, either we gonna obey God, <laughs> or we gonna be miserable. <laughs> And so we're like, okay, that's it. We left there that day and started making, <laughs> started talking about, you know, Body of Christ Worship Center. Now, beyond being a co-pastor, you are an author. You yes, just wrote the book, The Worshiping Church. Yes. And you have been talking about some highlights on Instagram about the worshiping church, like the one about if the only mic you care about is your mic. Like, whoa. Yeah. Talk about some of the stuff you cover in the book. That one is uh for the worship leader. Um, um, the that that part, that clip that you're talking about, of course, is directed toward the worship leader. There is a chapter, one chapter, one chapter in the book, the worshiping church, that is uh entitled The Worship Leader. The book overall is not about praise and worship per se. Mm -hmm. um, it is about what worship really is, um, how it transcends the corporate worship experience, how it is a lifestyle, and how um, when we enter as a body into true worship of God, how it affects our lives and how it affects the world around us. Um, and so, um, um, so that particular um, moment, the clip that you're talking about, we're talking about the um, the discipline that um, the the proper perspective that is necessary for uh, the worship leader, what our role actually is, and how we can't um, succumb to the pressures to perform, um, all those kinds of things. And I don't remember how we in that discussion. I don't remember how I got to it. I think we might have been getting ready to talk about the Lucifer complex, which I 
uh, talk about in, in the book, um, uh, avoiding the Lucifer complex, um, remembering that um, Lucifer, of course, um, in while in heaven, the Bible says, first of all, he was created. And he was, which is key. Um, I think when, when God says you were created, you were perfect um, until um, iniquity was found, found in you. You were perfect from the day you were mm -hmm. created until iniquity was found in you. And I think it was God flexing. <laughs> God was flexing on him and letting him know, just in case you forgot, you were created. You were not the product of your own genius. Right. You're the product. In fact, you're the product of mine. So I, um, I did see a clip where you talked about how the, you said no one talks about the angels that talk to Lucifer to fill his head up with all that. Yeah, that supported him. You know, the, the first thing is that Lucifer, the Bible says he was covered in stones, um, covered in precious stones and a, and a jewel, no matter um, um, how beautiful um, when we, you know, when it shines, if it's in the dark, we have to remember that if a jewel is in the dark, if it is completely covered, we know nothing of its beauty because it is only, its beauty is only seen in how well it reflects light. Its beauty is only seen when light hits it. So depending on its cut, its clarity, you know, all of those things, its color, um, all of those things determine how beautiful it appears, but it, it, it needs the light. And Lucifer was beautiful because of his proximity to the light. Wow. Um, and he got it twisted. He began to he, he started acting like or thinking that it seems as though he was thinking that he was producing light, but he was actually reflecting it. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Thank you for listening to The Carl B. Phillips Show. For more information, go to carlbphillips.com. The Carl B. Phillips Show. Follow Carl B. Phillips on Instagram so we can stay in contact with each other.